you're thinking about short-term or long-term food storage in five gallon buckets, then you need to watch this video because I have information you need to know. Hi everyone and welcome to Tony Renee at Home. I have broken this video into two different parts. First, I'm going to answer some questions that I feel like you might have before getting into storing food in five gallon buckets, whether it's short term or long term. And then second, we're actually going to get into sealing some Mylar bags and I'm going to show you how that's done step by step and the equipment that you will need. The first thing that I would like to say to you before we even get started is this. Do your own research. You are responsible for doing your own research for any type of food preservation. I am not an expert. I will link a website that I love to use down below in the description box that will be more in depth than what I can give you here in the amount of time that you'd be willing to watch. Now the first question is this. Why would you even want to store food in five gallon buckets, short term or long term. But I think you already have an idea because you're watching this video. But if you still have questions about why would you want to store food in five gallon buckets, I think the short answer is a repeat of 2020. What if you got sick? What if you lost your job? What about weather? whether it's snow or hurricanes or whatever else happens in your area. What about just food shortages in general? We're still experiencing some food, short food shortages even now. So it just makes sense to me to have food stored up so I don't have to worry about if people are sick out there and I don't want to go out or if we're being mandated to stay home. I don't have to worry because I already have food stored in my house to feed my family. And for me, that is the biggest reason of all, to store food. And so the next question is, what kinds of food should you store? Well, the easy answer to that is, what does your family like to eat? You wouldn't buy beans or rice if your family doesn't eat beans or rice, right? So those are things that you just wouldn't buy. Those are things you wouldn't store. The next thing is, what about foods that you cook with? Sugar, flour. The next thing you should think about is, what types of food are hearty? Oats for oatmeal, beans, rice, provided that you eat those things, pastas. These are all things that you can eat smaller amounts of, but they'll fill you up faster. And when we're hungry, when there's things going on out there that we can't control, we're not worried about carbs. We're worried about feeding our family. And then how much food should you store? Well, this kind of depends on your family again. Do you eat a lot of rice? Then you would store more rice. If you eat beans, but you don't eat them a lot, then you wouldn't store a lot of beans. Another thing that you might want to consider when you're thinking about how much to store or you're making the plan for how much to store is where are you going to put it? It has to stay cool, preferably cool, dark. Can't be put in a garage or a barn or another building outside. It's like anything else that's a pantry staple. It needs to stay dry and cool. So somewhere in your home, wherever you have a nook or a cranny, that's where I would store my food buckets. You might need to put your stuff in a spare bedroom closet and just stack your buckets up. You might have a basement. I don't have one. If you have a basement, I'm a little envious. But you could stack them in your basement you could put them behind your couch. Whatever works for you and your family, that's where you're going to store your buckets. Let me turn the camera around and pull a long-term bucket up here 
and a short-term bucket up here and show you the difference. My long-term food storage is in a Mylar bag that has an oxygen absorber inside of it. It is Ziploc sealed and it is heat sealed and has a gamma seal lid on it. So here is how I do my short term storage from start to finish. I have it in a BPA free, food grade, heavy duty, plastic bucket liner. These are the bucket liners or plastic bags that are used for brining turkeys. I put my outer ring for my gamma lid on my bucket. I put my plastic bag in my bucket and then I put my food in the bag. I squeeze out as much air as possible because air is what makes your food spool. I twist the top of the bag and then I put my lid on. You want to be sure that you are labeling your food. Now this is bread flour and I will go through my flour quickly. So I do not have an expiration date on here. But I have, I just use freezer tape. You don't have to have fancy labels. Masking tape, freezer tape, painter's tape, or make a fancy label if that's what you choose. I might not want to put bread flour in here the next time, so I don't want to waste my money on fancy labels and the time that it takes to make them. So I just have freezer tape on here and it says bread flour. And then, because this is going on the bottom shelf of my shelving unit here, I also have a piece of freezer tape here on the front that says bread flour. So when it's Back on the shelf, all I have to do is bend down because I make sure that this is facing out and then I can see this bucket has bread flour. So I have it labeled on the top and I have it labeled on the front. Okay, that is how I do my short-term food storage. You do not have to use the plastic bags. They are not necessary. I use the plastic bags just because it keeps the bucket clean. That is the main reason and it's just an extra way to keep air out. Let's move on to long-term food storage. So what kind of supplies do you need to do long-term food storage? You need a five gallon food grade bucket. Now food grade bucket is kind of controversial. You will hear some people say that if you are sealing your food in a Mylar bag, it doesn't matter if the bucket is food grade because the Mylar bag is food grade. And they say that the BPAs that might be in the bucket or any chemicals that might have been in the plastic won't seep through that Mylar. I say do whatever works for you, but as for me and my house, <laughs> I'm not finishing that the way you think I'm going to. I'm using food grade buckets. Okay, so what else do you need? The bucket. A Mylar bag for a five gallon bucket. I have bought, I get mine at discountmylarbags.com. I would show you my receipt, but it has my address on it, so you can't see that. These do have a Ziploc seal up here at the top, and there's probably a good two inches above that. And that will, make, that will make more sense as to why I said that when we're actually sealing this bag shut. But this five, or this Mylar bag, is big enough to fit in a five gallon bucket. That's what it's for. And you can get gamma lids, which is what I was just explaining for the short term food storage. Or if your bucket comes with the old fashioned, just pound it down and leave it alone. If that's all you can afford, that's fine. Gamma lids, they're about 
six bucks a piece. I think that's what I paid for mine and that was quite a while ago. So it may be quite a bit more now. I don't know. I do not know. I'll be honest about that thing. Um, so you need your bucket, some kind of lid, whether it's the old fashioned one or the gamma, your mylar bag, and then to go in your mylar bag, you are going to need oxygen absorbers. At least 2,000 cc's of oxygen absorbers. Depending on what you're storing, some things like beans, because there's more space between beans than there is rice, per se, um, and pasta like elbow macaroni, you're not going to hurt it by using two. But these are 2,000 cc oxygen absorbers. But then you need a way to seal your Mylar bag. There are stupid expensive Mylar bag sealers. And some people will tell you that's what you have to have. I'm here to tell you that's not true. I went to Walmart and I bought this Tresemme one inch ceramic flat iron. And this is what I used. It heats up to 430 degrees. There did I say 230? <laughs> this heats up to 430 degrees. So you need your bucket, your Mylar bag, oxygen absorbers, and whatever heat source you're going to use to heat seal your Mylar bags. Then you're going to put the lid on your, your bucket. And then the last thing that you're going to need is a rubber mallet to pound on your lid or your outer seal for your gamma lid or you're going to need somebody with muscles like my husband because he was just pushing them down i was busting blood vessels in my finger trying to get that thing down so i just left them for him have anything that I need to seal long term in a mylar bag right now. However, I wanted to take you through the process and we're just going to pretend like I have something in this bag. I'm using a gamma lid. So the first step I would do is put, use the rubber mallet or a strong somebody somebody with muscles, and put this outer rim on your bucket. Then you're going to take your Mylar bag and put it inside your bucket. And whatever food you have, whether it's rice or flour or oats or beans or pasta or whatever, you're going to put it in your bag. I kind of, as I'm putting it in there, I kind of shake it down a little bit to let it settle on the bottom because then more will go in. And when it's full, and you don't want it full up here, I fill mine a couple of inches below the rim of my bucket because there's this much of this lid that has to go down inside this bucket as you're screwing it on. So keep that in mind. You don't want to fill your bag. And this bag is bigger than what you really need. So be sure that it's below the rim so your lid will fit on. And you can close this and fold it down inside your bucket. All right. So we've got our food in here. And now we need to get our oxygen absorber in here. We need to get it zipped. We need to get it heat sealed. I had put my oxygen absorbers in my bags and I had sealed my bags on a video that I had prepared for you. And then I went back and watched that video and I was not impressed. So I am going to take part of that video and I'm going to insert it here so you can actually see the process of putting the oxygen absorber into the Mylar bag and then how I sealed it 
with that flat iron. Everything that needs to be in a Mylar bag is already in a Mylar bag and is already in the bucket. I'm gonna get this plugged up, get my buckets lined up here, and then I'll bring you back. So I am going to get all of these opened on one end, on one corner, and ready for the oxygen absorber. I do have a pretty good system here, and you might wanna think about that if you're gonna do this yourself. So let's get this open. I don't even need those scissors. Woo, here we go. This is exciting and fun. I'm just going through here and getting these in these bags. Unfortunately, I have those left and can't do anything about it. But now I'm going to cut back through here. I'm going to squeeze all of the air out of these bags that I possibly can with my hands. And then get them sealed with that zipper. Now I am going to come back with the flat iron and I am just going to smooth this out as much as I can and I'm going to take the flat iron to as much of the top as I can, as close to the top as I can. because if I do that, then I might possibly still be able to use Owl Hot. Imagine that, my zipper seal again. Okay. And we are sealed, I believe. I'm gonna, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I'm gonna run this over this again. Again, this is long-term food storage and I'd rather be, I'd rather stand here and take a little bit longer. All right, I'm gonna let that cool off. There you go. I wish I had good lighting here. Let me see if I can move down here and you see this a little bit better. I am just taking, I'm smoothing this out first of all to get out any wrinkles that might be there. And I'm just putting the flat iron right on the top of that seal. And I might be going down an inch because really I have enough here that I could cut below this instead of ripping it open at this notch. I could cut this sealed edge off and then reuse this zipper again and still have enough of an area here left that I could seal it a second time and really get my money's worth out of my Mylar bags. Come back down here. This is fun. Can you see that? Probably not. Again, I apologize. Okay. I'm gonna set these on the ground. This is cool. I'm going to set this over here out of my way. Bring this forward. All right, 
no wrinkles. I'm gonna take it in as far as it will go and just clamp it and slide it off. And I'm gonna step to the other side. And maybe you can see this better. Just gonna slide this all the way on, clamp it. Woo, I didn't mean to go down that far. <laughs> I cannot look in the camera and pay attention to what I'm doing. And I'm just sliding this down the mylar. Okay, I'm going to go in here in the middle. And I will check all of these seals. So we are zipper sealed and we are heat sealed at the very top. So I think we're good. And I can tell that these oxygen absorbers are already working. Okay. I am done. I will check all these seals in the morning and make sure that they are really good and sealed. Okay, so Adam got all of the lids on for me. He was just pushing these on with his hands. And here I am, busting blood vessels. He is the strongest man I know. They all look like this. So we've got all the lids on. I have identification here. I have identification here. And then I have identification here. So that way if something happens to this one or this one or both of these on the outside, I have the one on the inside. I am just going to get these put up on the bottom shelves and that's going to be it for this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments section below i have so many other pantry videos that i want to put out there for you so if all of this sounds like something that you would be interested in please go ahead and subscribe and until the next time god bless